Thanks for tuning in with us at Dream City Church Omaha. For further information, including past sermons, visit us online at dreamcityomaha.church. We hope you enjoy the message and that it has a positive impact on your life. Dream City Church. How's everybody doing today? Amen. It's good to see you. If nobody's told you yet today, let me be the first to tell you you just look amazing. You look fantastic. Thank you. I didn't say that to get that in response, but I appreciate that as well. Today, hey, listen, today we're going to start a new series. Anybody up for a new series? It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. I love new series because it's like you you never quite know what's going to happen by the end of it, right? Like you have the the messages lined out. You've You've got your plan, but the Bible says that many are the plans in a man's heart, but ultimately it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so, you know, I, I, I know that God has, has kind of birthed this in, in us and, uh, and wanting to just give you what's inside of us, um, but ultimately letting him have his way. And, and we need what's, what's inside of him anyway, not what's inside of me. Uh, and so I'm excited about this new series. We're calling it Growing Pains. Somebody say Growing Pains. Growing pains. And before we get into the sermon, listen, today's, it, it might feel a little bit different because I want today to kind of be like me and you just sitting across the table having coffee together. Okay, I know some of you I've had the, the, the privilege to, to be able to meet with individually. We've been able to get coffee or lunch or, or sushi if we're really lucky together. Um, but, but I don't have the time this week to meet with everybody individually one-on-one. And so today I want it to be kind of like we're sitting across the table. We're just chatting today, all right? We're family anyway. And so we're just going to chat today. And before we get into the message, I just want to encourage you, those of you that have not gone through the Next Steps class, you need to go through the Next Steps class. And I've talked to people and like, well, but Pastor John, the Next Steps, that's for, that's for new Christians. And I've been saved for 40 years. Listen, it's not just for new Christians. Pastor John, that's just for people who are new to, to Dream City Church. Uh, it's not just for people who are new to Dream City Church. Well, well, who is the Next Steps class for? It's really for everybody. It's really for everybody because at Dream City, we, we say we're about this and, and our vision and our mission and our passion really is threefold. We want to do everything that we can to help everybody around us. Number one, discover Christ because you're, you're nothing if you don't know Jesus. If you're not in relationship with him, you're missing out. And today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, you'll have a chance by the end of the service to, to enter into relationship with him. But, but it will be the, the, the best decision of your life. And if you've been coming, just kind of checking out this whole Jesus thing, that's fine. No pressure. No pressure. But I do want to say this, that, that it will be the best decision, the best day of your life, making that decision to, to come into relationship with him. And there are so many people in our city who need to know Jesus. They need the hope and the love and the joy that is found in him. So number one, we want to help everybody discover Christ. Number two, to recover their identity. Because the enemy has done a masterful job of stealing our identities. See, in... in, in in the natural, we're so careful in protecting our identity. I'm not going to give my social security number to just anybody. I'm not going to give my bank account information to just, to just anybody. I'm protecting my identity. We pay people to protect our identity. We pay people if there's, to, to alert us if there's suspicious activity regarding our identity. But when it comes to, to our true identity, we're so flippant with it. And the enemy has come and he's gotten us to believe, not just to a, for, for, for us to believe, but he's gotten us to tell ourselves that we are less than what God has created us to be. And so we, we want to help everybody discover Christ, recover their identity, uncover their purpose. We want to know what you were created to do and to help you live that out. And we believe that if we can get everybody to to those three things, that it unlocks the abundant life that Jesus promised in John 10, 10. And so what is the next steps? What does next steps have to do with any of that? Really quickly, it's just one tool that that we use to help you to kind of get you started in that process. Because week number one is what does it mean to, to be a Jesus follower? What does it mean to, to be a Christian, to be a disciple of Jesus? And you say, well, I've been, I've been saved for 40 years. I don't need that class. How many you know every now and then it's okay to go back to the basics? 
It's okay to, to go back to what you once learned and maybe have forgotten or got jaded to or have taken for granted for the last period of time. And so week number one is what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Week number two is who are we as a church? It introduces us to you so you have a better understanding of our mission, our vision, our values, all of that stuff. Dream City Church, here is who we are and here is what we're seeking to do. Week number three is all about you. Somebody say, it's all about me. It's all about you. It's about your strengths. It's about your spiritual gifts. We'll get you a code that, that you can take the, 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 the Clifton Strength Finders and find out why. Because here's what the Bible says, that, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, that God knew you, that God knit you together. Everything that you have, you have because God's given you the, the, the color of your hair and the color of your eyes and, and your height and, and all of your makeup. Everything that makes up who you are, God has placed inside of you, including the strengths and the gifts that he's given you. The problem is so many of us don't know what our strengths are. So many of us don't know what our giftings are. And so when it comes time for us to live our purpose, it's like, how can I live my purpose? I don't even know what I'm good at. I don't even know what my strengths are. I don't even know what, what God has placed inside of me. So week three is all about you and helping you kind of uncover some of those things. And, and, and the strength finders, it's not just, you know, helping you uncover that, but it uncovers so much more in your life. It'll, it'll, it'll help you in your relationship with other people. It'll help you in your workplace. It'll help you in your personal life. It'll help you spiritually every single way because once you know how God formed you and how God made you and what he's placed inside of you, the light kind of comes on and everything's starts to make sense. Like, oh, so that's why. Yeah, that's why. Because God's intentional about what he does. You don't do that by accident. It's not by chance that you think that way, but, but God has made you to think that way. And so week three is all about you. Week four is, is how do we now, knowing what it means to follow Jesus and, and knowing what the church looks like and knowing what my strengths and my gifts and my abilities are, week number four is, is how do we put all of that together and help you start to uncover your purpose by serving at the church on a Sunday, at the door, in kids ministry, in youth ministry, whatever the case may be, we want to give you opportunities to serve. And a couple weeks ago, we said, we don't have to serve, we get to serve. Because when I serve, it, it helps me in that uncovering of my purpose process. I don't, I don't know right away. We wish God would come and just kind of lay it out beginning to end. God doesn't work that way. God's not MapQuest, okay? He's not going to give you starting point, ending point, everything in the middle. God is turn-by-turn turn directions. God is Siri. In 400 feet, turn left. In 500 feet, merge right. That's how God operates. He doesn't give you the beginning and the end and every turn in between, but he told Abraham, go to a land that I will show you as you go. And it's as we go, and it's, it's, it's as we are obedient in the daily things, and, and I start to serve here, and I'm just, I'm just holding a door, but, but I'm using the gifts that God has given me and the smile that he's put on my face, and, and I have just such a gift of encouragement, and I didn't know why I had the gift of encouragement, but I know now that it's to, to serve other people, and so as I serve other people, it begins to, to make sense, and, and I begin to uncover a little bit more, and maybe it's not in this area, maybe it's in this area, but, but this is where I get, get my foot in the door and get started. Listen, it's, it's all to help you guys, okay? It's not like this, 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 this Orwellian plan to somehow like brainwash you into doing what we want you to do. The, the, the only, it's to help you. It's to help you understand yourself, to understand him, to understand the church, and to understand the part that you have to play because the Bible says that we are all his body. We are all members of of his body. And so, so the first week of August starts the first week of Next Steps. It's a four-week class. It rotates. You can jump in at any time. It would be next week, but next week is the fifth Sunday of the month, which is kind of random, and so we don't have it next Sunday. But the first Sunday is during the second service, right across the hall in C3. And so how many of you would say, Pastor John, I'm going to Next Steps the first week of August? Okay. Five of you are honest. The rest of you, shame. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's always going. And so jump in at any time. But, but, the sooner the better. Yeah. 
And so, so next Sunday, just, just rather than coming to service, second service, either get up earlier, come to first service and stay for the next steps, or come second service, go to the next steps and stay for third service. That's why we have three. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy for you, all right? Today we're starting a new series. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Does it feel like we're just kind of hanging out, chatting today? That's all we're doing. All right, so John chapter 15 is where we're going to be. And, and John 15 is kind of like the, the overall theme for, for our series, for our, our time together over the next several weeks. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number one. We're going to read through verse eight. And if you don't have your Bible, it will be on the screens. But Jesus is speaking, and this is what he says. He says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. Why? So that they will produce even more fruit. You've already been pruned and purified by the message that I've given you. He says, remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Verse 5, yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers, and such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Somebody say, don't be that branch. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask me for anything you want and it will be granted. Verse 8, and when you produce much fruit, You are my true disciples, and this brings great glory to my Father. Let's pray this morning. God, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for this time that we have together. I pray, Lord, that over the next few moments that you would speak through me, that you would come and have your way, that every word would be anointed, that it would go forth and produce fruit in our lives. God, that we would be that good soil. Lord, help us not to be the hard soil where the bird comes and snatches it. Help us not to be the shallow soil which which bears fruit quickly, but but it doesn't remain. Help us not to be that that rocky soil that the, the seed is choked out by the cares of this life. But God, we want to be the good soil. That that seed goes down, it penetrates, it takes root, and and it brings forth fruit and much fruit and eternal fruit. God, anoint the words, anoint our ears to hear today. We pray in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. 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 Growing pains. How do you know sometimes it it hurts to grow? It hurts to grow. It hurts to get older. You find find that you were, oh, there there are times where you're not quite able to do what you used to do. You're like, Pastor John. You're only 33. I know, but I have four kids. So, like, in parent years, that makes me, like, 60. <laughs> right? I was, I, was, I was talking to a friend this week. And I'm 33. I was talking to this friend, and, and his birthday's this week, and he turns 38. I was like, man, you're five years older than me. You're getting old, dude. And he's like, not really, because at our age, we're not judged by our age. We're judged by the ages of our children. And you have a 12-year-old, and my oldest is seven, so really, you're five years older than me. I'm like, that actually kind of makes sense. <laughs> like, it, it's rough getting older, and this week has just been like a constant reminder that I'm getting older. And my oldest, Jace, turned 12 this week. And, and I woke up that morning, and I rolled over, and I looked at Angel, and I said, we're not old enough to have a 12-year-old. And she said, I know. Not only is he 12, but he's starting middle school this fall. I know. And so I need you to be praying for your pastor. Because I remember myself in middle school. And I remember the prayers that my mom prayed where she said, I hope one day your kids do to you what you've done to me. And so it's like, why, parents, don't pray that over your children. As much as you want to selfishly, don't pray that. Don't you speak that over your, chil- over your children. But he's, he's starting. And so I have a middle schooler. This fall, and I'm, I'm just thankful that Deviate, the youth ministry here, starts at seventh grade because he's got one more year until he's in. If I, had a, if I had a kid in youth ministry, I don't know what I would do. But Jewel, our princess, not only is our oldest now, like, moving out of the house, but our princess 
is starting kindergarten. I'm going to start making my wife cry on the front row. Our princess is starting kindergarten this fall. And those of you who are parents, you understand that when a kid gets ready to go to kindergarten, they have to go to the doctor. And when they go to the doctor, they have to get shots. They have to get their legs cut off, essentially. <laughs> because when we told Jewel, like, hey, you're going to have to, we, we got to go to the doctor. We got to make sure that you're healthy for school. And, and she's going to, uh, that you're going to have to get shots. And the look on her face, you would have thought that we told her we were putting her up for adoption because she was like, why would you betray me? Mother and father, why would you do this to me? And so Angel came to me and she said, John, you're going to have to be the one to take her. I can't, I can't see my baby like that. I can't look at it, have her look at me like that. But you, you can. And so you take her. You take her to the doctor and take her to get her shots in Jewel. If you're brave and strong, daddy will take you to Target afterwards because everyone knows Target makes everything better. And so the day of the appointment was this week, and so we, we, go, up to the, we go up to the hospital, and we, we get checked in. I'm like, Jewel, remember, brave and strong. You're so much braver than your brothers. You're stronger than your brothers. And, and they were scared, but you're not scared, baby. You, you're my princess, and you're amazing, and you can do anything. And, and they're not even going to hurt. It's just going to be like a little pinch, and you're not even, you probably won't even feel it. She's like, yeah, you're right, Dad. I'm like, I'm lying to my daughter this whole time. <laughs> So the nurse takes us back and she, okay, you, you know, do the weight and do the height and the blood pressure and the ears and the lungs and the heart and listening to all this, you know, and then the doctor comes in and checks on her and, you know, it's all going so well. And, and the doctor stepped out and said, okay, in just a moment, my nurse will come back. And, and I know what that means. Jewel doesn't really know what that means. And so she sits down on my lap and the nurse comes in and she doesn't have the shots at this point. She just has the finger prick. So they prick her finger. And they start squeezing, you know, they squeeze to get the blood. And they squeeze and get the blood and squeeze and get the blood. And Jewel's like, okay, lady, you've got enough blood. And so she gets done and puts a Band-Aid. And that's where everything, like, they, they went wrong because you don't put the Band-Aid until you're done. And so they put the Band-Aid and Jewel's like, Dad, that was easy. You were right. Can we go to Target now? I'm like, baby girl, we're not done yet. Well, what do you mean we're not done yet? You, you haven't got... You haven't got your shots yet. That wasn't my shot? No, that wasn't your shot. And immediately the waterworks began. And the, the tears began to flow. She thought she was done because she got the Band-Aid to prove it. And so the nurse comes in with the needles and she's like, all right, Joel, I need to get you up on the bench and picks her up and puts her on the bench. She's like, okay, dad, hold her arms and hold her down. And so I'm like holding my daughter down and she's like, hold her tight. I was like, you better be careful, lady. I'm going to drop kick you in the face if you talk to me like that. <laughs> and Jewel's looking at me and the, the look of terror in her eyes. And she's just, daddy, 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 daddy. And I'm like, yes, baby, I love you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your mom made me do this. Yeah. <laughs> so the nurse like grabs two and she like double, like double fit one in each leg at the same time, boom, like she was Rambo or something just jams these needles into my daughter's legs and Jules like freaking out. Daddy, daddy, I know. And so like I pick her up and I hold her. She's like, daddy. So what, babe? Daddy, I don't think I can feel my legs. <laughs> and so I pick her up and I put her down. She's like, I can't feel my legs, daddy. You have to carry me. So, so I picked her up and we went to Target and we bought toys and it made everything all better. But how do you know growing is painful? Growing is, is hard work. Growing is not easy. There are, there are things that we have to go through. If we want to grow, there are things that we have to go through that we don't want to go through. There are things that we have to experience that we don't necessarily want to experience, but growth is needed. We have to grow. We understand growth. We, we, we look at the physical world and we understand growth. We look at the natural world and we understand growth. But, but I think sometimes we take it for granted because we don't really know what goes into the growth. 
We don't, we don't see what's happening behind the scenes to cause all of this growth. We, we come to church because we want to grow spiritually, but we don't really understand what it takes at home during the week to cause us to grow spiritually. We think that all we have to do is come to church on Sunday mornings and we're, we're good, right? Like I check a box off my list and then I grow. That's not the way that it works. And so over the course of the next few weeks, we want to, to dive into what it looks like to grow. What does it mean to grow? How do we grow? What is required for us to grow? But, but what does growth produce in our lives? What, what is the result of growth? And so that's kind of where we're, where we're going. And if you're just joining us, then you've joined us at a perfect time because we're starting this new series and we'll all grow together. Okay, and this isn't just spiritually. This is every area of your life. We need to, to evaluate constantly, how am I growing relationally? How am I growing in my marriage? Is my marriage growing? How am I growing as a parent? How am I growing as a leader? How am I, how am I growing as, as an employee, as a follower? How am I growing financially, educationally? What, whatever the case may be, physically, how are you growing? Some of us are growing this way, and that's not the right type of growth. <laughs> but we're going to get into it. Listen, it's, it, honestly, we're going to get into all of this. Why? Because, because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. It's not your temple, it's His temple. How are you taking care of his temple? And are you being a good steward with what he's given you? Are we taking care of ourselves mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, every way possible? We are created to grow. And that's what you need to know. If you're taking notes, first thing you, you need to write down, you were created for growth. You were created for growth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God comes to Adam and Eve, and, and the Bible says that he blesses them, and he tells them, be fruitful in what? multiply. What is that? It's speaking to, to growth. He says, be fruitful and multiply. And he says, everything here you are, are reigning and ruling over. Be fruitful and multiply. Grow, 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 because you were not created just to exist. You were not created just to take up space, but God had a plan and he has a purpose for your life. And there is something more that God has placed inside of you that if you call it quits now and you refuse to keep growing, you'll never reach what God has ordained for you to reach. But if we would just have the determination in ourselves to continue to put one foot in front of the other and say, even though it's difficult, even though it's hard, I'm going to continue to grow spiritually. I'm going to continue to pour into my marriage because I want my marriage to grow. I'm going to continue to grow personally. And even though I don't want to wake up in the morning and go to the gym. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go to the gym. Why? Because I know that that's going to add years to my life and the Taco Bell that I eat every day for lunch isn't. And so I'm, I, it, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good. It's good. It's, it's, Taco Bell is like sin. And here's why. Here's why. Because it's good in the moment but then 30 minutes later, what happens? You're like, man, I wish I didn't do that. Man, I wish I didn't have that Chalupa Supreme. Man, I shouldn't have had that seven-layer burrito. You're like, Pastor John knows the whole menu. Yes, I do. I'm a recovering Taco Bell addict myself. But it's like sin because the Bible says that sin in the moment is pleasurable. But afterwards, what happens? It brings destruction. Taco Bell brings some destruction. Jen, you got me all off my notes now. <laughs> you were created for growth. Last month I had to, <laughs> Lord. <sighs> <sighs> last month, thank you. Last month I had the opportunity to go speak at a youth camp in northwestern Montana. And, and when the camp was over, some of the guys were like, hey, we're going to, to Glacier National Park and we're going to go hiking. Do you want to come with us? Absolutely. I have a, an extra day before I fly home. I'll go with you guys. And it was, it was a teen challenge group, a, a group of teen challenge guys from Memphis. And, and they were going out and they said, you can ride with us and come on, it's going to be fun. So we get out there. I'm like, okay, how long is this hike? He's like, two and a half miles. Is that a loop hike? He's like, no, that's there. And two and a half miles back? Unless you have a helicopter picking you up at the top, like, yes, two and a half miles back. What's the elevation change? 1,500 feet. Like, that's a pretty good hike. Like, that's a good hike. And I'm looking at some of the boys that we're hiking with. 
And while one day they may have been athletes, it doesn't look like they had seen a gym in probably a decade and a half. And we were completely unprepared. This one guy, he was wearing dress shoes and slacks. Right. And we start walking up this mountain. And we start this hike. And, and as we're walking up, we start to see people come down. And this guy comes down, and he's got bear spray on his hip. We ain't got no bear spray. <laughs> like, we're walking up, and we hear bear whistles all over the mountain as, as people that are hiking that blow the whistle to hopefully scare the bear. Like, we don't have anything but our big mouths to scare the bear. Like, I'm walking up here with Jesus and the Holy Spirit as my protection. Like, God, you better do something if a bear attacks me. And the whole time, I'm just thinking, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun one of these dudes, and I think I'm going to be okay. So we're hiking up, and you know how it gets. Like, you get halfway, you start seeing the people come down. They got this look of enjoyment and refreshing on their face, and you're walking up like, like you're going to die. And every time, every time you see somebody, you're like, how much further? And it doesn't matter where you are on the trail, somebody coming down always gives you the same answer. It's just right around the corner. You're almost there. Keep going. You're, it's, it's worth it. It's awesome. You're, you're going to love it. And so we hike what feels like another mile. And it's like, how much further? It's right around the corner. Like the last guy told me it was right around the corner. And we get to this point where like three quarters, of the, three quarters of the way through, and this dude, he's struggling. And he finds this rock. And we all like see it at the same time. He starts to go down for the rock. And we're all like, no! Why? Because when you sit down, it makes it a whole heck of a lot harder to get back up. And so we see him start to go to sit down. We're like, no, don't do it. Don't quit. Don't give up now. He's like, guys, I can't make it. You just go on. Like, no, dude, you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to push on. Like, it's not much further. Come on, we'll carry you. And the whole time we're like, not one of us is carrying this dude. Like, (laughs) stop lying to him. But you do want to come. Like, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. I know it's hard. I know the muscles are burning. I know it feels like you can't do it, but trust me, you can do it, and you're going to regret it later. No, it's fine. It's fine. Just go. This could be the only time you're in Glacier National Park. Are you sure? Yes, just go. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, I'm out. We continue the hike, and it was probably like maybe a quarter of a mile to the finish of this hike. And we get up there, and we start taking pictures to show him. He's going to wish he was here. <laughs> and I took a picture. Go ahead and put that picture up. And this, is, this was the end of our hike. Whoa. It felt like I was in a postcard. Like there's this, there's this, this mountain lake that's, that's crystal clear. You can see the logs at the bottom of the lake. There's this bowl that you're in, and it's mountains. And on the other side of these mountains, up higher, is glaciers feeding about seven or eight waterfalls that are coming over these cliffs. And we got up there, and we took pictures, and we hung out for about 30 minutes, and then we started going back down. And on the way back down, we, we came up on the rock that the dude was sitting at, and guess where he was? Still sitting on the rock. He said, how was it? Dude, it was awesome. Let me see pictures. So we started showing him pictures. He's like, man, I wish I would have gone. I told you you should have. But, you know, as we were walking down, I was walking and, and hiking back to the car. I was like, man, how many, how many people in our lives are like that? We know we're on a path. We know we're, we're on a journey. We know that it's going to be hard. We know that it's going to take hard work and it's going to take determination and, and dedication. But, but we get to a point where either we get complacent or we get tired and we sit down. And as we sit down, it makes it so much harder to get back up. And then we wonder why we're not growing. It's because you sat down 10 years ago. Why is my marriage falling apart? Because you got complacent 10 years ago and you haven't poured anything into your relationship. Why does it feel like I haven't heard God's voice in so long? Because you got tired and you gave up. You sat down on the side of a mountain 
knowing where God was calling you. And listen, we hiked up and we saw some beautiful stuff, but in my life, the journey that I'm on, my destination makes that look like nothing because, because we were hiking in the mountains. And yeah, we see a lake and some glaciers and some waterfalls, but, but I'm pushing on to a place that Jesus has been making ever since he left this earth. And so I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue to put one foot in front of the other. Why? Because I was created to grow. You were created to grow emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually in your marriage. Are we growing in our marriages, people? Are we growing spiritually? You were created to grow. Number two, if you're taking notes, write it down. You must be healthy to grow. You must be healthy to grow. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. This is what the Bible says, that, that he makes the whole body, us, fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts, what, grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Jesus in John 15 says, if you remain in me and I remain in you, then you'll bear fruit. What is that? It's us getting the nutrients from our source. And if we're getting the nutrients from our source, we're going to continue to grow. But we have to be healthy in order to do that. When we went to the, to the doctor, they, they measured Jewel and said, Jewel, you've, you've gained eight pounds of muscle this year. Jewel, you've grown so many inches this year. That's, that's amazing. You're so big and you're so strong. What are they doing? They're tracking her growth because growth is a sign of health. If she wasn't growing, they would know something is wrong that we can't see. If there's no growth, there's no health. In your marriage... If you're not growing in your marriage, then something is either missing or something is wrong. Got real quiet real quick. If you're not growing personally, then something is either missing or something is wrong. If you're not growing spiritually, something is either missing or something is wrong. If you're not growing personally, something is missing or something is wrong. You must be healthy to grow. See, when, 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 <laughs> when I go to the gym, I can't go in and eat any way that I want and then expect to continue to grow physically just because I go to the gym, right? Like, I can't go eat Taco Bell every meal of the day and then go to the gym and expect to lose those 20 pounds that I found. That's not the way that it works. We understand that physically. We understand that in the natural but we don't understand it spiritually because we come to church one day a week. We go to the gym one day a week. The other six days out there, what are we consuming? Are we consuming things that are, that are, that are making us healthy and causing us to grow? Or are we consuming things that are detrimental to our spiritual health? You can't grow if you're not healthy, each and every one of us. Okay, so Pastor John, how do I know if I'm growing? Because I see the look on some of your faces like, okay, so how, like, give me a test. All right, how do I know if I'm growing? And here's how for, for the remainder of our series, for the next several weeks, our definition of growth is simply this. It's positive change. Growth is positive change. Growth is is positive change. Write it down. Growth is positive change. Burn it into your memory. Growth is positive change. And so when we talk about growing, what, you're, what, what I want you to ask yourself is, what is the positive change in my life? And well, here's what I want. I want this week, I want us to go home and I want us to do an honest evaluation. I want us to do an honest evaluation. Sit down, and ask God. Sit down and ask your spouse, because here's what I found. A lot of times, the voice of the Holy Spirit sounds a heck of a lot like the voice of my wife. God chooses to, to speak to me through my wife a lot of times, and sometimes it's great, and sometimes it's like, God, choose another voice to speak through. But she's always right. I mean, I was giving the ladies a chance to amen, but they didn't take it. She's always right. She's always confirming what God is saying to me. And so, 
So here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit down because, because if we're created to grow, if we need to be healthy to grow, if, if we're, we're not going to get complacent, if we're not going to get stagnant, if we're not going to give up, if we're not going to find ourselves halfway up this mountain sitting on a rock somewhere, meanwhile, everybody's walking past us in, in life and they're going further and they're doing things that, that we wish we could do. Listen, you were created to do so much more. It's time for us to get off of the rock and start doing something. It's time for us to start growing in every area. Again, not just spiritual, every area. But here's what I want you to ask yourself, because healthy things grow, and growing things change. Healthy things grow, and growing things change. How do you know that your kids are healthy? They're growing. How do you know that a tree is healthy? It's growing. How do you know that your bank account is healthy? It's growing. What are those? Those things are positive change. So growth is simply a positive change. So this week, you need to get alone. You need to get quiet time. You need to get with God. You need to get with your spouse. You need to ask, how, how am I growing? What is the positive change in my life? Every area, personally. How am I changing for the better in my personal life physically how am i changing for the better physically emotionally how am i phys- how how am i am i am i changing for the better in our marriages how is our marriage improving how is where is the positive change in our marriage do we see one if not okay what's wrong or what's missing spiritually What is the positive change in my life spiritually? If I don't see any growth over the last six months, if I'm exactly today where I was with Jesus at the same place six months ago, what's wrong or what's missing? And as you ask that and as you pray and you you see God, he will show you those things. Here's what's wrong or here's what's missing. Here's what you're consuming that you need to get rid of. Here's what you need to be doing instead. Listen, we're going to get into a lot of this stuff over the course of this series. Really, my, my, my goal today was just to encourage you in that we were created to grow and to get us to start thinking about growth in terms of positive change. It's not some daunting task. It's not some, some concept that we can't wrap our heads around. What does spiritual growth look like? It's simply positive change. And if we're all called to grow, we better know how to do that, right? So that's where we're going. Again, if you've just joined us, it's going to be perfect. We'll all start growing together. If you've been in church for the last 30 years and you haven't grown, then it's perfect for you because we'll all start growing together. But each and every one of us was created to do so much more, to be so much more, and for so much more. But we'll never get there if we remain stagnant and refuse to keep growing. Amen? Stand with me this morning. Let's pray.